The DA is accusing the Mpumalanga Education Department of renting a building for a cost of 11 million rand a year instead of building a school to accommodate 179 deaf learners. The rental agreement has been going for five years. For more on this, I'm joined by the DA's provincial spokesperson on education in Mpumalanga, Jane Sitole. Jane, very good afternoon. Thanks for speaking to us. Just how did you come across this information? Um, good afternoon and good afternoon to the viewers at home. Obviously, I sit on the portfolio of education in the Mpumalanga Provincial Legislature. And of course, we look at the reports, we do oversight as it is our role to hold the executive to account. The issue comes from 2011 when the former MEC Mahaule announced that we are building a school for the deaf, which is not only accommodating learners that are deaf, but learners that have got learning challenges in many ways. And if you look at our province, these learners were accommodated in Limpopo. To this day, we still don't have uh, enough space for learners with uh, learning challenges. And there's waiting lists in other schools where we have, where we do oversight because the need is just huge. So for the department to go and pay a private entity 11 million a year instead of building the school as it was announced from 2011, it is uh, disheartening. If you look in 2018, 2019, the department spent 2.2 million just on the uh, design uh, in Mbombela because they identified the site in Mbombela after spending 2.2 million, then they, they dumped the site. Unfortunately, it was not suitable. The following year, they spent 87,870 uh, uh, thousand rand in Umjindi again for the for the uh, uh, design which again the site was apparently not suitable so to this day now we have they have found a site in Emalashemi to this day the department is saying all of these places that they have spent the millions they, they the sites were not suitable to build a school for this learner and now finally we've moved to Emalashemi and last week we met with the Department of Education the HOD said they have budgeted again for the design, not the building, not the, the, the starting, the construction, the, nothing of that sort. Again, the department has budgeted for the design of the school now in Emelakene. This is the third side that the department is spending millions and nothing comes out of it. And then on top of that, to make matters worse, they go and pay a private entity 11 million per annum to house the 179. And we want this 179 to be housed or to find a, a, a place to go because parents are frustrated at home with learners that have all sorts of learning challenges. Just in August 2021, the MEC for Education was answering questions in the legislature. And I put the question. He said there's over 10,000 learners with eyesight uh, 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 um, I, I, I impairment and there's over 5,000 with hearing impairments just just hearing and eyesight we're not talking about learners that may be on wheelchairs learners, learners that have maybe mildly or severely mentally challenged we're only talking these two disabilities there's over 15,000 learners in Mpumalanga right, this Jane, is if, if you'll to allow me to, to, to interject and, and come in there what, what is the proposed cost or the suggested cost of actually building the school outside of the, the, yes. the three amounts that you've talked about where the Department of <laughs> Education in Pumalanga has uh, gone mm -hmm. out, uh, done feasibility studies, if, if, if you will, on, on three separate occasions, and none of those have uh, come to fruition. Yes, um, the, when the project was, was, uh, first uh, came to light in 2011, the cost was $250 million. Last week, the HOD told us now, now that now they need $650 million to build the school. So, of course, the costs keep on escalating because 11 years down the line, 11, 12 years, nothing has come of it, despite this money being budgeted every year for the school, which now we believe is being used for something else. Hence, the DA has now reported this to the public protector because we cannot year in, year out, talk about something that never materialized. While this is the need, we do oversight, and if there's uh, uh, someone from the Department of Education here, they will tell you, we do oversight all the time. Even this coming week, I'll be with the Human Rights Commissioner on one of the schools that I reported where learners were sleeping in a classroom, and, and, and they are, the learning challenges, some of them are severe, some of them are disabled, some of them can't even help themselves. They were sleeping in a classroom during the night and using that classroom as a classroom during the day. The pictures were very, very uh, sensitive because the learners were helping themselves in, in buckets and things like that. And I 
reported this to the Human Rights Commission. We are making a little bit of progress there, but there's still a lot of learners that are at home because there is not enough space for them. You can go to Gamapubu, which is also a, a school for the learners with the learning challenges. The waiting list, because I was there uh, uh, last month, if you ask them, the waiting list is huge. So there is a huge need in our province for the department to go and spend Private tuition, 11 million a year. And by the way, even the way this uh, a supplier or service provider was appointed is highly questionable. And that is why we've given this to the public protector, because this particular supplier is paid through deviation. Right now, the memo says the contract must be renewed year in, year out until a school is built. Will the department ever build a school? And if the department doesn't build a school, are we going to continue paying 11 million and most probably the, the cost will escalate as we go just mm. because we are refusing to build a school? Yeah, Jane, Jane you've, you've obviously indicated that this 11 million is being paid to, to a private entity. Uh, does the Department of Education have access to government facilities? Uh, and if so, what will be the cost, the alternative cost, in lieu of actually building and completing a school uh, to the 11 million that they're currently paying? If, if, if you look at the schools, uh, the department has built quite state-of-the-art schools, actually, for uh, a conventional, uh, a conventional schools for learners that go to a, a conventional schools. We've built quite state-of-the-art boarding schools. Mm. And if you look at those boarding schools, like Chabachu, if you look at a, 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 a Makazini boarding school, this are boarding schools that they, 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 when we build it for the learners with learning challenges, obviously uh, uh, you know, from the beginning it will be designed like that. Those uh, uh, costs are the costs that the department is managing. We've built five state-of-the-art boarding schools as we speak. The only thing that we are not building is the one that accommodates learners with learning challenges. And that is why we feel that in Mbomalanga, the learners that are, are disabled or have some sort of challenge or learning challenge are being ignored by our government. Because why would we leave them behind and accommodate only learners that can go to a conventional schools? These boarding schools that we've built, we welcome them, we appreciate them. But why are we leaving others behind? If you look at the cost of producing such a state-of-the-art school, that is the cost that you need mm. to produce one, just one school for learners with disabilities, just one. Not many, like uh, we know that, uh, 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 you know, we cannot equate. So we're not trying to equate learners that go no, to no, conventional schools. Jane, I'm afraid... <clears throat> Jen, I'm afraid I'm going to have to, to call time on this conversation, but certainly appreciate your, your insights. Uh, and if you'll take time to, to keep tuned in to 405, we're now going to get a response from, uh, from the Department uh, of, uh, of Education. I'm joined by the Pumalang Education Department's spokesperson, Jasper Zwane, who's on the line. Jasper, very good afternoon. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Uh, we've been speaking to Jane Sitole, who's the DA's provincial spokesperson, of uh, education in Pumalanga and amidst allegations that the department is spending 11 million rand a year on a facility, school facility for children who are deaf. Uh, can you confirm this? Yeah, gr uh, good afternoon, Hugo, and, and, and greetings to your listeners, as well as the uh, honorable member, Sitole. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, we want to confirm that we are doing everything possible as a department to accommodate le learners with special education needs, those that need uh, spe special care and support. Currently, we have 18 special schools in the province, and we are accommodating more than 4,357 uh, learners. Uh, in this case, there were about... Uh, 200 learners who were from who were studying in other provinces uh, who did a uh, accommodation and their plight was accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic and we mm. needed to uh, ensure that uh, much as they have a school which is a government facility where they are currently studying because they're coming from other areas we needed to secure an accommodation for them uh, given that they are 200 Hugo. And, and they stay in that accommodation, they get meals, and they are also getting a laundry uh, as a service. Uh, if you cost it per learner per day, it's about it's less than 290 rands uh, per learner that we are currently spending. Well, I think, Jasper, sorry, if you, if you allow me to, to come in there, I mean, you, you talk about 
the department is doing everything in its power to ensure that uh, the, the issue of a, a school for these learners is, uh, is sorted out. But work began on a school in 2011. And if my maths serves me correctly, that was 11 years ago in which you Hello? began work. For the last five years, you've been paying 11 million rand a year. No, no. According to, to the DA, correct. according to the DA, um, James Chitole, you have budgeted for the design of schools on three occasions, done three feasibility studies in which you spent uh, huge sums of money. And to date, no site has been identified. How do you respond to those assertions? No, we, 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 we can confirm that we started earlier to uh, identify a suitable site for uh, building a school for the deaf and blind learners. And, and, and the sites which we were able to locate were not uh, suitable uh, in keeping to the expectations. And we can safely indicate that we're working you know, around the clock as we speak. We can you, can you also confirm that, as, you've, as we speak, that you've paid? We have been able to secure a site at Emalasini. And the feasibility study is uh, underway, as well as the plans and design. So hopefully in the near future, we will have a school for the deaf and the blind in the province. And we want to promise our communities that the Department of Education will do everything humanly possible to ensure that the plight of the learners with special education needs is taken care of. Jasper, what I, what I find difficult to, to understand is how you spend money on three different sites, certainly over the five years that you've been paying uh, 11 million rand. Uh, can you talk to us about the no, process? It's in, not uh, correct that we've been spending 11 million rand every year. Uh, when this project started, we had 38 learners who mm -hmm. were accommodated in the place that the honorable member is referring to. Obviously, we would not spend 11 uh, million. Currently, so, we, we have 200 learners, and we're spending less than uh, 290 rands per day per learner for accommodation, for meal, breakfast, and, and, and lunch and dinner, as well as laundry. And while that is happening, parallel to that, we are working uh, around the clock to build a school for the blind. So that process is on. She is aware of it and we will not rest until that school is built. Yes, there have been delays uh, for a number of years because we're not getting a suitable site. Now we have a site at Emalasini, and uh, construction is expected to commence. So in our next conversation, I assume we can have a conversation around what progress you've had in construction of the school in Emalasini, and when do you expect construction to commence? Yes, we, we, we correctly we would have loved that uh, uh, that program uh, that project uh, unfolded uh, 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 fast in an accelerated manner. However, we needed to get a suitable site uh, which will be able to accommodate uh, such a category of learners. All right, and I will I will welcome that kind of a, a conversation. Jasper Zwane, Pumalanga Education Department spokesperson, seeking to clarify issues around allegations or that assertion by the DA that they're spending 11 million rand a year on a school for the deaf and blind, and he has confirmed that it is far less than that amount. Well,